today. Today we're going to start a new series, and it's called The Holy Spirit Today. The Holy Spirit Today. The Holy Spirit is, if you're taking notes, remember I told you that you'll only, you'll only retain 2% of what you hear if you don't take notes. The Holy Spirit Today. You know, a lot of us in our relationship, we know, we know who God is, right? That's actually, that's actually the vision that we have for you. We want you to know God, right? Number one, know God. So we're, we're very familiar with who God is, and, and even in our, our vibe, we want, we want to put Jesus first, right? We're familiar with those two, uh, those two people, but are we familiar with who the Holy Spirit is? And I would almost bet that most of the time when the Holy Spirit is mentioned or spoken, maybe for, for some of us, not all of us, it, it perks our ear just a little bit, you know, especially um, when it comes to when it comes to to church. I would say that most of us, when we hear the word the Holy Spirit, we probably go back to an experience, maybe a maybe a teaching, maybe a denomination. A lot of denominations are formed on this particular topic and the function that it plays out in today's life. So it's, it's a very important topic. And for here in southwest Missouri, our, our location, I don't know if you do this or not, but the AG headquarters is in Springfield, right? The Assemblies of God. It's the, it's the Mecca of the Pentecostal capital, right? It, it's located in Springfield. So there's lots of Assemblies of God churches. Probably one of the largest Assembly of God churches in James River Church is located in Springfield. We have a Baptist college. Shout out SBU, right? We have a Baptist college. We have Catholic churches. We have non-denominational churches, Lutheran church. We have all of these different denominations where we're located. Who, who, who has the right teaching on the Holy Spirit? Some of us probably have our uh, opinions on who does. We all have the same book that we read from, yet we all have different opinions. Isn't that right? That's one thing I love about the Christian faith. We all have the same book, but we all read it and interpret it and apply it to our lives just a little bit different. And you know what? That's okay. There's a few things you're not going to change my mind on, right? The only way to have a relationship with God is through Jesus. There is no other way. He's the only way to heaven is a relationship with Jesus. But there's some other things that we can get, we can get into that we can argue about that are, it's just a little silly to argue about. So I want to take the next few weeks, maybe even the next few months, and I want to talk a little bit about who the Holy Spirit is, his role in our life, our relationship with him. And I want us to be reminded of his presence that is with us every single day. For those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we have a Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit is today. We are living in the time of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Jesus said to his disciples and to us, it's best for you that I leave. But I'm, I'm sending somebody to you that will help you, right? How many of you need help? How many of you would say, the person sitting next to me needs help? <laughs> right? <laughs> and so I want to, and this is a challenge that I, that I have for myself, right? I want to approach this topic, I want to approach this topic with fresh eyes, 
fresh eyes. We all have preconceived notions of who the Holy Spirit is. But our, our doctrine and our theology need to come from the Bible, what we believe and why we believe it. But oftentimes, our belief comes from a tradition or a church we were raised in. My, my background is I'm AG, Pentecostal, charismatic. I, that's my background. I, I would probably call myself a, a Baptocostal, right? I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of in the middle on some things, right? Spirit-filled. So, so that is my background. So the lens that I look through everything is with that lens, right? Just because sometimes that's just what I was raised in and the, and the tradition of the place that I was raised in, okay? So I'm, I'm approaching this whole subject with fresh eyes through Scripture. And there's a few things that I've learned about people, and honestly, I've learned about, my, about myself, too, when it comes to the Holy Spirit. We all respond differently to the moving of the Holy Spirit, right? When we get maybe into a service or we get into a situation, we all kind of respond differently to, to who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. One of the ways it can be, it can be emotion driven. People respond with emotions and sometimes this, this scares people, right? I remember when my uh, wife came with me to church once and she heard somebody behind her speaking in tongues. She was like, boop, gone, right? She was ready to get out the door, right? So sometimes those things, if it's emotion driven, can scare people. Would you agree? Sometimes it can be a learned behavior, right? We just, we imitate people. We imitate things. We imitate services. You know, and, and sometimes, anytime you have people involved, it can be selfish. If it makes somebody feel good, they do it. But here's what I do know. I do know that the Holy Spirit wants to do something in you. Okay? I'll, I'll say it over here. The Holy Spirit wants to do something in you because, because I know, here's what I do know, he wants to do something through you. That's it. He, he wants to do something through you. It's more than emotion. It's more than a, a learned behavior. It's not selfish. It's a special work that he wants to do in your life, right? So that he can then reach somebody else in your circle of influence. So I want to approach this series like you've never heard of the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? Can we all say that? Yes? Say yes. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that when you disagree with me. <laughs> approach this series like you've never heard of the Holy Spirit. I want to start, and I'm going to go, I'm kind of, I really just want to lay a little bit of a foundation today and really just plant a thought in your heart for the, that will lead us into the next weeks of this series. But I want to start in the Old Testament. And we first see the Spirit of God in Genesis 1-2 as the Spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. We know also that, that John tells us in the beginning was the Word, right? And the Word was Jesus. Yes, you're right. The word was Jesus. So we know that present in that, in creation, was God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, right? Hovering over the face of the earth. But one of the things I love the most, and for those of you maybe that are just looking for something to read, in Judges, we see in different chapters, the Spirit of God taking over Somebody, right? Have you guys ever heard of Samson? And and Samson was just 
slaying people and killing people with donkey jawbones and pushing over columns and just all of these things, right? It's because the Spirit of God came upon him and he was able to do those things. One of my favorite places is in Judges 6.34 in the New King James Version. And I can't remember what I wrote down in my notes or not, but Judges 6.34 reads this. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And in the Hebrew, that those two words, came upon, means that the Spirit of the Lord clothed himself with Gideon, which means he took possession of Gideon. I think that's the perfect picture of the Holy Spirit's role in our lives today, that he clothes himself with Gideon, right? That the Holy Spirit clothes himself with, just, with Justin, takes possession of me, leads me, and guides me. Anybody freaked out yet? Am I scaring anybody yet? Taking possession of people? What's this guy talking about? Right? Judges talks in many cases of the Spirit of the Lord. And if we look in the New Testament, we can put a heavy emphasis on the Holy Spirit. I, John, if, if you're, you're looking for some scripture references to read John chapter 14 through 16. In fact, I would just start at John chapter 14 and read its entirety uh, till it's finished. It, it, Jesus talks a lot about the Holy Spirit. And in John 20, 21 through 22, the New Living Translation says this, and again, he said, Jesus said to his disciples, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. He is preparing them to continue the work of the kingdom. Jesus today would say, the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. And he gave them the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. This is one of the last things that Jesus said. You need the Holy Spirit. Right? What's that meme say? You need Jesus to go to Walmart? I can't remember what it says. Something like that, right? You need, you need the Holy Spirit in your life. So we continue on to Acts chapter 1, 4 through 8. And it's the English Standard Version. And it reads this. This, this is where the church is about to be birthed. Right, And they're getting ready to carry out the ministry. Jesus ha has, a, has died and ascended, and he's, and he's telling these people in this group, this is what he is instructing them to do. It reads this, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season that the Father has fixed on his own authority. But, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus was telling his disciples, don't go anywhere. 
don't attempt anything until you receive the Holy Spirit. Wherever, wherever you go, you need my power. We cannot live the life God wants us to live or fulfill his mission that God has called us to carry out without the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Jesus said, wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit because he's going to give you the power to accomplish all the things I've asked you to accomplish. You know what that power was one of the things was to be a witness to your neighbors right we can talk about all we can talk about the holy spirit we can talk about the gifts of the spirit all we want but one of the main things that was given to us was the power to reach our neighbors it, it was the power to have the conversations that we need to have with the people that we love so desperately to tell them, hey, guess what? You need Jesus, right? It, it's our responsibility, Bolivarians, Polk Countyans, wherever you live, it's our responsibility to reach those around us, right? I can't reach everybody but I can reach the people who are around me. I can't reach the people who are in your life, and it's not my responsibility to reach them. Guess what? It's your responsibility to reach them. And when we have the awareness of the presence that's in us, right, it reminds us of our responsibility. It reminds us to take our eyes off of ourself and to focus on those around us, right? There's power to witness. There's power to live an overcoming life. Acts 19, I've, I've got several passages for you this morning. Is that okay? I, I don't have much, much longer. I know you've heard that before. I don't have much longer. Acts 19 reads this. Th this is where... Paul encounters the new believers. And in Acts 19, it's actually 24 years into the church. So, you know, I know sometimes we can read from Acts 1 to Acts 19 in about 30 minutes, and we think all of those things just happened, 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 happened. But that's not true. In Acts 19, it's 24 years after the church is grown. And, and Paul has this encounter. And I think it can apply to us as a people when it comes to our understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. It reads this, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we We've, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. One of the first questions that Paul asks these people is, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And I think this can apply to us, like I said, Christians today, that we might be unfamiliar with who the Holy Spirit is and what his role is in our lives. And I think we can gather a, a few categories from this, from this scripture. I think people can be uninformed of who the Holy Spirit is. Like I said earlier, we know God, we know Jesus, but we're a little unaware or uneasy of who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. So we can be uninformed, just like these people were uninformed. We haven't even heard of who the Holy Spirit is. We haven't been taught about the Holy Spirit. The second thing is, I think we can be misinformed. We can be uninformed, and we can be misinformed. We, we've been taught some things that aren't in Scripture, right? Sometimes, sometimes there's beliefs 
that are based in experiences and traditions, right? Have we all, I could probably tell you some stories, but I'm not, right? And the last thing that I think people can be is we can just be, we can be skeptical. <laughs> we, can, we can be skeptical. We can, we can throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can take something that's so precious and we can toss it out because of misinformation or just a misunderstanding of, of who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. And maybe we can even toss the baby out because we've encountered an extreme, right? Maybe something that has alarmed us or scared us or just something we don't understand. So I just, I want us to be careful in those areas. I have had some of the greatest encounters in my life with the Holy Spirit. I, I will, I was reminded of this story this week. I'll never forget this. I was a teenager and my family, uh, we went to, my, my brother went to uh, the Brownsville School of Ministry. I think there was a huge revival in the 90s um, at the Brownsville Church in Florida. And I remember going down there. I can't remember. We might have been on vacation or something. I can't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. I remember going to this church, and I remember, this is going to shock you all, right? We waited in line for in hours we were waiting in line to get into the service right isn't that crazy waiting in line for hours to get into the service because it was packed it was absolutely bonkers packed and we get in there and i think we were actually in an overflow room so we weren't even in the main sanctuary right these people were having services every single night and i can't even remember how long it went on went on but Anyway, we get in there, we get in, this, we get in this room, and it's an overflow room, so we're not even in there, right? We're watching something on a, on a screen, and, and I'm just a teenager, and, you know, I, I've been raised in church and, and all those things. I knew that, but I'll never, ever forget when they called us out of that room, that watching room, and they, they instructed us to come into the sanctuary, I will never forget the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that I felt in that room. It was a weight like I have never experienced again in my life. Just the heaviness of the Holy Spirit. And really what that was, it, I couldn't fully identify what it was now, but it was a, it was a conviction on my life. Because believe it or not, as a teenager, I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing, right? I'll never forget that. And you know what my response was? No thanks. Nope, not for me. I don't want to do it right now. I'm not ready to change. I'm going to live my life. But I will never forget that moment. I've had some of the greatest memories and moments in those type of atmospheres where the Holy Spirit is just... You can't deny it. You can't deny it that he's there. And so I just want us to be aware of those areas. Quickly, the whole, this is, I have one point. It's 11 o'clock. Will you give me 30 minutes? You, you gave Pastor Archie 30 minutes last week. So Quickly, we believe in one God. Okay, I, I want to show you that the Holy Spirit is God. We believe in one God, eternally existent in three distinct personalities the trinity right i'm a son justin i'm a son i'm a brother i'm a father three distinct personalities one person right? and that's a that's not a great example but that, that's the best i can do right and i want to show you in scripture we read in john 14 16 it says this is jesus he said and i will ask the father and he will give you the helper to be with you forever right three one god three distinct personalities luke 3 22 says and the holy spirit descended upon him on jesus in the bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven the dove represents the holy spirit a voice came from heaven that's god jesus right three three distinct personalities one god 
You are my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. I'll close with this. It's a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. And it reads this. It says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Right? We have the three. But I want to take these, these three things. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, we, we love Jesus' grace, don't we? I hope you do. Right? It, it's by his grace that you're sitting here this morning, right? I hope that you love his grace. It, it's good. It's an unmerited favor. It's an undeserved blessing. It's a free gift. We read that Paul tells us it's only through grace that you're saved. It's only through grace that you're saved. None of your works will accomplish anything. It's because Jesus has grace for you that you have salvation. And, and we, we love the love of God, don't we? Boy, the love of God is, is good. We love that agape love. Boy, he loves us with a choice. It's unconditional. There's no strings attached. He's not going to love you any more today than he does tomorrow. Nothing that you do, you will never earn his love. He loves you just because he loves you. Are you thankful for that love? I'm thankful for that love. And we love that. And we, and we read in Romans 5.5 5, that because the love of God has been poured out into your hearts, it's by the Holy Spirit that was given to us that the love of God is poured out into our hearts. And I'm so thankful for grace. And I'm so thankful for his love. But what about, what about the communion of the Holy Spirit? We're, we're familiar with God. We're familiar with Jesus. But man, what about the Holy Spirit? What about the communion of of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That, that word communion, hang, hang with me for just a sec. That word communion is actually fellowship. And it's the same word that was used in Acts 2 after the Holy Spirit came and the disciples and the new believers came together. That word fellowship actually means cement cements believers together. With the coming of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, these, these new believers in Acts 2, the priorities of the followers of Christ focused up upon spiritual unity with the Lord and with the brothers and with the sisters in, in church. Listen, real quick. The Holy Spirit, communion with the Holy Spirit, will change your priorities. Right? Communion with the Holy Spirit will change your priorities. I, I don't know about, about you, but I need in my life, I need a priority adjustment sometimes. Right? I need to remember that this isn't all just about Justin. This isn't just all about Life Church. Right? This is about the believers, the brothers and sisters in Christ. When the Holy Spirit came and they realized the importance of the Holy Spirit, the priorities changed. The word communion also means fellowship on the basis of intimate relationships. This is my final thing that it means. Communion means that you travel together. You, you travel together with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about next week who He is in your life. But the Holy Spirit is your helper. And you travel together with your helper in an intimate relationship that empowers you and equips you to live this life. Let's pray. This morning, I want to remind us 
For those of us who don't have a relationship with Jesus, but in John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And here's what I know this morning. The Holy Spirit has gathered with us as a church. And one of the many things that he does is he convicts the hearts of those who don't know him. It's, it's not in a, it's not in a, a, a judgy way towards you. It, it's a loving extension to you this morning. And if that's you, it could be that you're coming to the realization, maybe your heart is beating a little bit. Maybe the Maybe your palms are sweating a little bit. I don't know. But what that is and who that is, that's the Holy Spirit reminding you this morning that you need Jesus. You need to have a relationship with Jesus. So this morning with nobody looking around, is there anybody in this place that would just a raise of a hand up and down that would say, you know what? I need Jesus. I need to have a relationship with with Jesus. Is there anybody here this morning that would say that? I see that hand. Anybody else? You're not the only one that would say, you know what? I've lost my way. I need help. I've come to the end of the rope. I need to start over this morning. Is there anybody else? Lord, we thank you for the hand that was raised. And this morning, in that heart, and in that life, you know that individual personally. This morning, may they confess who you are, that you are Lord, you rule their life, and you are Savior. Without you, we're lost. Help them, lead them, and guide them in their walk and in their step. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.